Hello and welcome to this quick demo of the Mirasoft HDR, the new data acquisition software for the Mira HDR. We'll start by booting up Mirasoft HDR. Straight away it will ask me if I want to continue on with my ongoing project and display all the information about that project. But I don't want to continue, I want to start a new project and it will start by asking me what I want to name it. I'll just call it demo. The 22 channel setup, which is the selection I want for my Mira HDR, is already selected as a template for me, so I'll just go ahead and click create. When a new project is created, I am brought right into the measurement settings. This is the place where we can affect the trace, trigger and antenna array. Now, if we want to go back to the project's menu at any time, it can be found here, in the main menu at the top left. The options we have for the measurements are stacks. This is how many times each trace is stacked. Now, as you know, stacking lots of traces on top of each other will give us better data quality, but it can slow down the acquisition speed. Samples is simply how many samples are taken per trace. Triggering can be done with distance or time. Imagine we want to collect traces between set distances. We are given the options to set that distance here. Our current wheel is displayed, and if we need to calibrate either a new or an existing wheel, the wheel wizard will help out with that. Time is simply defining the amount of time between each trace in milliseconds. The channel selection pane shows in what sequence the antennas in the array fire and which receiver picks up that signal. I can change this by either clicking on selections to remove them or click in an empty square which creates a new transmitter to receive a pairing. Alright, let's have a look at positioning. Here you can set the GPS settings or choose to not have a positioning system at all. Now we want the GPS so I'll select that and we can go into the advanced menu. The advanced menu shows trace position settings geometry settings and power settings. All right, but we're mostly interested in taking measurements. So let's have a look at how the Mirasoft HDR assists in collecting that data. There are five panels that are very interesting to us. On the left side, we have the speedometer, which shows the speed, but also a color bar, which goes from green all the way up to red serving as an indication that maybe you're going a bit too fast. In the top we see the GPS view and we can zoom in and zoom out. We can choose to center the view or we can choose to rotate the view, just like in your car. Alright, so I'll click the red record button to start the measurements and since I am in demo mode, I'll just cancel the positioning system since that is already done for me. And we're off. Just below the GPS view is the profile view, together with the radar trace, showing the trace for channel 1. And I can select which channel I want to view on the right hand side. And next to the channel selection panel is the top view. I can zoom in or zoom out. And I can define what is shown here in the profile view. Down at the bottom right corner of the screen, I can choose which view I want to see. Looking at the side view, it is a big view of the GPS view and the speedometer that we had in the expert view. We can also solo just looking at our top view and zoom in a bit to see a bit more clearly. And then of course we have the solo profile view with the trace shown right next to it. However, this is looking a bit boring, so let's grab our little arrow there, the grey one. And this is the filter and display settings. What we can do here is actually gain the profile view up until our trace is nice and fat. And there we go. We also have a bandpass filter which can be enabled. Same thing for the top view, bring that gain up. You can also remove background noise easily. I can change the vertical scale for the profile view, showing either distance or time. And the measurement unit can be defined as either meters 
or feet. We can also define the ground velocity. Once the measurements are completed, we can go back into the projects pane, choose to export this data into R Slicer.